Hello, everyone. Todd Huber from Airline here. Uh, back with our friend Chris from Ross Controls. And this time we wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about a specific machine safety topic um, that comes up quite frequently with our customers. And that's the subject of lockout tagout. What are most companies doing with lockout tagout? Most companies are really only addressing electrical lockout. They go up and throw the disconnect on the main control panel and they think I've turned everything off. The problem is, is that there's other sources of energy like steam, hydraulics, pneumatics that they're not addressing in their lockout tagout procedures. And the other thing that companies are not doing, they may turn off the power. And even if they turn off the disconnect for the pneumatics and hydraulics, there could be stored energy. And so this program is, the lockout tagout programs are for the isolation and control of hazardous energy. If you haven't properly dissipated stored energy, you haven't really done the program. So why should companies be concerned with lockout tagout? Well, number one, it's law. Number two, it's the right thing to do. And when I mean it's law, there is uh, something called CFR 29, uh, which is a book of code of federal regulations. And uh, CFR 29 part 1910 subpart J outlines the legal requirements that companies have to follow uh, to meet the OSHA objective. Okay. Is there any other requirements that they have to follow? Well, there's uh, something called ANSI Z244, which gives very good direction in defining the requirements of lockout. Who's responsible for lockout tagout? Well, uh, a this is a confusing topic to a lot of people because uh, a lot of customers say, well, that falls on the machine builder. They have to provide the, lo the right lockout tagout products. Unfortunately, it falls on the end user. So employers are responsible for developing a lockout tagout program that is documented and posted at the plant. They also have to develop procedures for each machine of how to lock that machine out, and then also how to return energy after lockout. They also have to define all the lockout points in the procedure. They have to provide the lockout tagout hardware. They also have to train their um, personnel and contractors on a yearly basis. And they also have to do periodic inspections of both the procedures and the program. That is the legal requirements outlined in CFR 29, part 1910, subpart J. <laughs> so what are some of the best practices? Well, some of the best practices are that companies are using uh, devices that are um, easily identified. So for example, this happens to be the Ross uh, lockout valve called LOX and it meets the requirements of, it is a single action. It's easily identified because of its color and shape. It is also only lockable in off position and through the pop-up indicator, it shows that pressure has actually been relieved. Those are requirements of devices in the local standards. International standards take it a step further and say that you have to have an exhaust port that is at least the same size as a supply port and so that is uh, um, something that a lot of people um, are implementing these type of valves for that reason. So what do you recommend customers you know, do with, with respect to lockout tagout? Don't sit down and start writing procedures. Define what your program is gonna be, how you're systematically gonna go through your plant and inventory all of the machines in the plant, identify all of the energy sources on that machine, and then get input from your maintenance people because you know lockout tagout is for isolating energy to prevent unexpected startup while doing maintenance. So involve your maintenance people in those procedures because they know what they're doing and what they need to do. You need to make sure to make it easily identified, easily documented. Thank you very much. It was really good information. Great. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks. To learn more information about Ross Controls or Lockout Tagout Procedures or Products, please click the link embedded in this video. Thank you very much for your time. We'll see you next time. Perfect.